Well, we'll just go ahead and move on into the healthy living segment and get it up on the screen there. All right, so if you're watching us there live online, we're on our healthy living segment. Hey, nice slide, Miss Andrea. Well, thank you. What do you think, Miss Lexi? Very nice, very nice. Pretty cool little slide there, healthy living. Healing through plant medicine. Plant medicine. Okay, we're in for a treat tonight. We're going to be eating <laughs> on some plants, you know. They want us to eat bugs. They want us to get rid of cows, you know. So it's, it's time to, you know, talk about some plant medicine. All right, so well, you're listening to Digging Deeper Podcast, a special edition of Healing Through Plant Medicine on Healthy Living. Go ahead, Miss Andrea, take it away. I know Andrea put together a very comprehensive, well, limited time, but a comprehensive article on something that's very dear to us. Yes. And it's uh, I'll just let you take it away from here. Go so, ahead. Lexi. Mm-hmm. You have been experiencing some issues the last couple of, last the last year? year, year or so, yeah. Yes, with migraines. Yes. Migraine headaches. Migraine, yeah, headaches. migraine headaches. And you've never had them before? No. Um, I had been having pretty recurring headaches, mostly related to dry eye symptoms and stuff like that, but they've been progressively getting worse, and now they've just started becoming migraines, and it's been... A joy to deal with. A joy. <laughs> yes. So because Lexi was going through all of this, we decided we'd look into some mm-hmm. natural alternatives to all the drugs that the doctor just said, oh, here, try this pill. Oh, here, try that pill, right? Yeah, because isn't that what you said? You know, I think yesterday you said it just made you mad because they just want to experiment again and let's try this. Yeah, there wasn't really any... Let's see what the cause of the migraines is. It's more like, oh, okay, you're experiencing migraines. Here's something for the pain. When you start feeling an attack coming on, make sure you take this. And it, I, I, I did have to take one last night and it knocked me out. So, so it's more for pain management rather yeah. than fixing the problem. Yeah. It's just yeah. a typical pharmaceutical approach. Yeah. Right. So I went ahead and put this article together because I'm sure that Lexi is not the only one. Right? Yep, that's our purpose. We want to help people live a better life through the truth and one of our beliefs here at Digging Deeper is that the pharmaceutical interest industry does not have our best interest at heart especially when they protect themselves from being held liable. So a migraine is a neurological disease and is much more than just a headache with symptoms that include nausea, dizziness, fatigue and increased sensitivity to sound, light or smells. If you think you may be suffering from migraines be sure to see your primary care doctor or a specialist who could diagnose you properly. Right. Right. But here are some home remedies to help treat some of the symptoms. The first one suggested is to add magnesium. Adding magnesium supplement to your diet in doses of 400 to 500 milligrams a day can help prevent migraines. And the supplement may avert the occurrence of Sensory disturbance as well as light and noise sensitivity. So, magnesium. Yes. Okay. You've heard that one? Yeah, yeah, I did some research into it, but yeah, magnesium was one of them that. Yeah. Another one was vitamin B2. That one I did not know. <laughs> yeah, so vitamin B2. Well, vitamin B2 <laughs> is one of those things that actually gives you energy, right? Mm-hmm. And immunity. Yes. So, vitamin B2, um, you can take about 400 milligrams daily can reduce the frequency and severity. Um, And it doesn't have as many side effects. Caffeine's another one. So it must be like the dilator, the the vasodilator. Vasodilator. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Some studies have found that caffeine may help treat migraines. It says 2019 review found that a chronic caffeine intake seems to increase the chance of migraines so you got to limit it to 150 to 200 milligrams. I think this is more dependent on what type of migraines you're having. Right. As to the limitation, you kind of have to test it for yourself. Number four, use hot or cold remedies. Applying heat or cold can help relieve it. Like, yeah, you said you did that last night, right? Yeah, cold um, washcloths. On your mm-hmm. eyeballs. On my eyes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Avoid light. Since migraines increase sensitivity to light and sound, 
the Mayo Clinic recommends relaxing in a dark, quiet room. And try to sleep if you can. Mm-hmm. You have a migraine corner. I do have a migraine corner. I put a blanket over it so it's completely dark. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to do it. Number six, exercise regularly. Exercising regularly can help reduce the risk of migraines by reducing anxiety, depression, and obesity. Which, you don't have a problem with that. No. But um, anxiety can definitely stir up your blood pressure, mm-hmm. causing, again, your constriction, constriction mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. your vessels. Yes. Number seven, get more sleep. Yep. Sleep is where you restore. Sleeping well is essential if you suffer from migraines, since a lack of sleep can trigger an attack. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my struggles, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Good sleep quality comes with going to bed at the same time every night, Ooh, waking up at the same time every morning, mm. and having a quiet and comfortable sleep place. Hmm. Okay. Consider peppermint oil. Now, this one was a new one for me. A 2010 study found that menthol and peppermint is a safe and effective treatment for migraines. Apply it to the forehead and temples at the first sign of a migraine. Yeah, it's got a cooling effect. Oh, nice. Okay. Number nine, take melatonin. Melatonin is a hormone that helps you with your circadian rhythm, making you feel tired at night and more awake during the day. A 2010 study found that migraine patients have abnormally low levels of melatonin. Hmm. Okay. So I know that a lot of people take melatonin these days and it does seem to help sleep it helps you sleep and so you said the migraine medication that they gave you knocked you out yeah so again a natural alternative can be accomplished with two simple things Mm -hmm. the melatonin and these other pain relievers rather than the chemicals and the drugs although didn't you say this one was this latest one was a non-pharmaceutical you said or non-narcotic 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 doesn't mean non-pharmaceutical folks right right okay. right, right right all right got it so in order to alleviate your migraine symptoms mm-hmm. you also need to know your triggers yes right I'm i know still my triggers kind of in the exploratory oh, stage of finding triggers <laughs> and you're still trying to figure, you know your triggers <laughs> oh that's something else <laughs> <laughs> So yes, you got to figure out your triggers if you haven't found them yet, but mm-hmm. you got to keep those down to a minimum if possible, mm-hmm. um, which you will really want to, right? Yes, right? Keep a migraine journal to determine what your triggers are so you can avoid them. When you do get a migraine, jot down the date, time, what you were doing, your symptoms, anything you ate, and how you slept. Journaling, you're saying? Journaling, yeah, right. Yeah, good idea. Mm-hmm. Right. Keep track. Keep trying. Some of the things that could trigger a migraine include menstruation, pregnancy, menopause, alcohol, Mm -hmm. too much caffeine, stress, bright lights, loud noises, strong smells, hmm, lack of sleep, jet lag, intense physical exertion, sexual activity, weather changes, Certain medications, such as contraceptives, nitroglycerin, and vasodilators, which is what we've been talking about all night, Mm -hmm. skipping meals, Mm -hmm. salty or processed foods, we talked about that earlier today, Mm -hmm. aged cheeses, and food additives like MSG. Okay? Hmm. So that's, you're talking about the vasodilators. Mm -hmm. Again, are we going to have in this report... The reference to the research you did last night, Lexi, about the protein, that four-letter protein that we... Oh, CGRP. Yeah. I did not add that in there? I did okay. not add that So maybe in we want to throw that in the discussion at some point? Just well, I just was thinking about that. So Lexi will pull that up for us, I think. Yeah. So what foods are good for headache relief? So if we want to be natural, we want to figure out what we can eat to make it helpful, right? So the number one on the list was leafy greens. Mm-hmm. They contain a variety of elements that contribute to headache relief. For example, research has shown taking magnesium can reduce pain. Well, spinach, kale, collard greens, turnip greens, broccoli all have high levels of that, as well as folic acid B6 and B12. Choo-choo. Papa, the <laughs> 
So Sorry. spinach is a really good one. Broccoli has also been known to fight off cancer. Oh, yes. Broccoli is a cancer. So cancer. these are all really good for you. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, nuts. Nuts. They're rich in magnesium as well, which soothes headache pain by re relaxing the blood vessels. Hmm. They contain significant amounts of vitamin E that research has shown can help control migraines. And that's if you have hormonal triggers. The best ones are almonds, walnuts, cashews, and Brazil nuts. I don't like Brazil nuts much. But anyway. They got a bad nickname when I was a little boy. Yeah, they yeah, did. I, I can't say the word. Yeah, yeah, they did. You're right. Fatty fish. Mm-hmm. Fatty fish, not the skinny ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no good. Fatty fish is rich in omega-3 fatty acids, EPA and DHA which are anti-inflammatory foods. Mm -hmm. This is what we were talking about with our health counselor in Wichita Falls, our great friend Vicky. Yes. Vicky knows a lot about those foods, and she's the one who taught me that foods are one of two things, inflammatory or anti-inflammatory. Right. Right. They contain B vitamins, including riboflavin, B2. That helps manage migraine attacks as well. It also contains the coenzyme Q10 and vitamin D. CoQ10? The CoQ10. You heard yep. that one before? Yep. Co CoQ10, I think that's the brand name for... Vitamin yeah, and pill, so they based vitamin. it on this, right? The pill vitamin for the mm. omega-3 oil. Right. Mm. Yes. Yeah, have you ever been recommended that or tried those? Have they ever said try CoQ10? No, they have Nobody's ever told me directly. <laughs> so salmon, cod, mackerel, and halibut are all good fatty fish. Fruits. Yay. Yay. We love fruits. Some fruits are rich in magnesium and potassium. Research is continuing, but some studies suggest potassium may help alleviate migraine pain by contributing to healthier nerve function. Bananas, of course, is the first thing that comes to mind, right? Yep. They're good for headaches because they deliver a dose of potassium, magnesium, B vitamins, and complex carbohydrates. All contribute to reducing headache pain. You can also have apricots, avocados, bananas, figs, raspberries, melon, cantaloupe, watermelon, and honeydew. Yum. All the melons. You got them all here, right? We're going to have yeah. some fruit tonight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Number five, seeds. The following list of seeds contain the omega-3 fatty acids. Okay, so we're running into that. So that might be another supplement you could look into as well. Medical research continues to explore blood vessel spasms due to constricted blood vessels as a possible migraine trigger. So if you use poppy seeds, sesame seeds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, and chia seeds, they can significantly reduce. You have to have significant amounts of magnesium. And so these are another way to get some magnesium into your body. Hmm. And not any one thing is going to fix it. you got to have a big combination. Right, right. Number six, whole grains. Whole grains contain complex carbohydrates, and they work to increase glycogen stores in the brain. They help relieve headache pain because their low blood sugar, hypoglycemia, can trigger headaches. One study found a correlation between iron deficiency anemia and migraines. Whole grains provide a wealth of nutrients that include vitamin E and B vitamins, iron, CoQ10 again, magnesium, and fiber. Kiana, barley, buckwheat, bulgur, whole oats, whole grain bread. All good for you. Number seven, legumes contain protein and fiber that help maintain blood sugar levels and magnesium and potassium to relieve blood vessel constrictions. They also supply coenzyme Q10, which may, per a study, reduce the number of days a migraine lasts. All these nutrients can help relieve the headache pain. Lentils, beans, peas, soybeans, and chickpeas. This one kind of surprised me. Hot peppers. Hot peppers contain capsaicin, which numbs the brain's trigeminal nerve and inhibits the neurotransmitter responsible for causing migraine pain. So it numbs the brain. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm, comfortably numb, man. <laughs> That's an interesting thing. They also contain vitamins C, A, B, and E. Yeah. Okay. Mm, hot peppers. Mm. 
Yeah, so jalapenos, habaneros. Numb the brain. Then I'll cayenne. The mouth. <laughs> right, and Anaheim. Yeah, it's going to numb everything, isn't it? <laughs> um, kind of sets it on fire. A little bit. A little bit. <sighs> we'll love it. Another one was a small amount of coffee or tea. One or two cups of coffee or tea each day may provide headache relief, especially if it's headache triggered by a lack of caffeine. Caffeine can decrease the size of the blood vessels, enabling better blood flow. The key is to find a balance and not consume too much. Yep, I can attest to that. A lot of people do that. Drink a cup of coffee to get rid of a headache Mm -hmm. or a monster. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of caffeine. (laughs) Just a little bit. I can attest to that. Yep. Ginger. Now, ginger I found in several different articles that ginger is kind of like super anti-inflammatory. It's it's awesome for helping with several different things Mm -hmm. as far as natural health is concerned. I'm going to say it's... It's right under turmeric, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Basically, number two, the turmeric with cucurum. But number two, I would say... Ginger. It's ginger. The most mm-hmm. mentioned, anyway, mm-hmm. in our research. Yes. Ginger Ging- Ginger is awesome. Ginger teas back um, in high school when I was having all those issues with the monthly stuff, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the ginger tea was something that they recommended to me because it helps promote better blood flow. So if it's more yep. blood vascular. flow. Mm-hmm. It's Again, all it's all system. vascular, right? Mm-hmm. Ginger contains a natural oil with chemical compounds important to helping headache sufferers find relief. It increases the chemical messenger serotonin that reduces inflammation. Everything is about inflammation. If we could get one thing across to you in our healthy living segments <laughs> for here, from here to the end of eternity, and, and actually not the end of eternity because eternity is forever. Right. right. Okay, so from here to the end of... And when, I, when we're at eternity, comes. we're not going to care about inflammation because we're oh. going to have the perfect bodies. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, we're not going to care about this podcast or anything else. But no, from here to the rapture, okay? Mm-hmm. From here to the rapture, the one thing we want to get across that we will mention every time and probably on every podcast that we do for healthy living is the number one enemy to the body or indicator in the body of something wrong is inflammation. Inflammation is God's way of telling us something is wrong. You pay attention to the inflammation. You don't mask it. You find the cause. When you find the cause and reduce the inflammation, your entire body works better because nothing works under pressure. Inflammation causes pressure. Mm-hmm. Under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so you can use ginger spice, ginger powder, ginger tea, ginger supplement, you can actually get the ginger root, slice it up, put it in all your foods. And I know I talked really highly about ginger, but okay, but ginger, but I got another girlfriend here at number 11 <laughs> called chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> dark chocolate. I know you're white chocolate, honey, but I got some dark chocolate friends too. <laughs> so dark chocolate is one of the best things for you. That is at least 70% cocoa contains a high amount of magnesium and riboflavin. So both nutrients help manage migraines by assisting with the relaxation of the blood vessels. Again, again, it's the blood vessels, right? Chocolate contains tropophan and serotonin as well. Number twelve, beets. Yes, especially red beets. Right? The red beets, yeah. obviously. Not the, sorry, sorry, guys, not the sugar beets. Okay, the red beets. <laughs> beets are rich in nutrients like manganese, potassium, vitamin C, and folic acid. And studies have shown that migraine. Migraine patients who consume two milligrams of folic acid, along with B12 and B6, experience better results in reducing their migraine symptoms. That might be another thing to add to the schedule, right? Yes. And number 13 is mushrooms. (laughs) Now, hold on a second here. Those used to be illegal. (laughs) I think this is the edible mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. We have a sponsor. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. on one of our businesses, one of those we do. businesses, yeah. That polarity, is, right? Yeah, Polarity Mushroom, the Polarity Farms. Mm-hmm. Right. They're really cutting it up downtown. <laughs> Cute. Slicing up some mushrooms and mm-hmm. yes. I hear that mushrooms are real fun, guys. Ah, ha, 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 very good. <laughs> is that a movie reference I missed? No, that's just a j- fun bad guy. joke. Fun guys. Oh. <laughs> Lighten up, will you? Okay. I get it now. All right. Fun guys. Fun guys. Really fun guys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good one, Good one Lexi. You got me. Okay. I, I'm slow. I'm old. <laughs> Mushrooms may help 
with migraines and headaches due to their potential anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. and antioxidant properties. Yes. Yes. So, avocados. I love avocados. And the uh, reason antioxidants, sorry, I just want to butt in a little bit yes. here. We learned in 2003, or four it was, when we first got married, we were taking this berry juice that was high in antioxidants, and we learned that the most important things that, that, that antioxidants do is keep your vessels clear of the gunk that, that coats, coats, coats it up on the inside. The arterial sclerosis, you know, the, right. getting the junk in the veins or in the blood vessels. So this keeps your blood vessels clean, the insides clean, the antioxidants do. Mm -hmm. And so that's why, you know, I mean, we went past that real fast. I don't know if you covered antioxidants before, but that's why the anti-inflammatories and the antioxidants are critical mm -hmm. to healing. Mm -hmm. Avocados are also rich in magnesium. Again, with the magnesium. Yeah. I think that one's important. You think? <laughs> yeah. yeah think. Which has been associated with the potential reduction in the occurrence and severity of migraines and headaches. Including avocado as a part of a balanced diet may contribute to maintaining adequate magnesium levels. Hmm. Number 15, figs. Hmm. Fancy. Figs, I, I know, I think, I think fancy as well. <laughs> figs have been suggested to potentially help prevent migraines as they contain potassium, which has anti-inflammatory properties. Adequate potassium levels may contribute to reducing inflammation and potential trigger for migraines. So, um, is there food to cure migraines? Simple diet during, during the headache period can often bring relief. And so here's kind of a summary. Uh, brown rice, well-cooked green, orange, and yellow vegetables, squash, carrots, spinach, dried or cooked non-citrus fruits like cherries and cranberries. So, that's what I found. Noted. 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 Wow, that was a great segment, and look what time it is. Yeah, just like that. Great, great research. That's Thank good you. information. Thank you, Andy. And Lexi already had done some of this research, but we mm -hmm. want to talk about that protein, don't we? Do you have some research there on that protein? Uh, yeah, so the meeting that I had with my doctor, we were talking about prescriptions to help kind of manage the pain. Um, there were a couple different kinds. One was a beta blocker. And another was the one that she ended up recommending, which was a CGRP blocker, which is a calcitonin gene-related peptide, which is a protein that is released from sensory nerves. So that's the direction that she took that she kind of recommended me in. CGRP is a highly potent vasoactive peptide released from sensory nerves, which is now proposed to have protective effects in several cardiovascular diseases. So again, it's about the circulation and blood flow. It's a potent vasodilator and proposed to have protective effects in several cardiovascular diseases. Again, has a proven role in migraine and selective antagonists and antibodies are now reaching the clinic for treatment for migraine. So, so they're saying you were overproducing. Essentially, yes. yes. Overactive, just like your imagination mm -hmm. as a child. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pharmaceuticals have their time and place, mm -hmm. but the more we minimize the use of the chemical drugs, the more potent they will be when we do have to use them. Right. Correct. So that's why we want to make sure that we are using as much of the natural healing that we can. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, it's a good way to end it there because what we're trying to do is let the what God gave us, our natural body and the defense system that he gave us, which is the most incredible defense system of all, to be able to work with itself and not against itself and not against outside foreign antagonists. So our goal is to help understand and to help you understand how many and how available these natural alternatives can be. So that's going to be a good segment. I'm really glad that we're going in this direction. I think the statistics that we give on the VARES report are important and we'll mm -hmm. continue that. But we just won't be talking about it on Friday Night Live. Right. So we'll still provide those numbers and just to keep that record. And uh, you know, if we ever come across something we have to do, then that's great. But yeah, so that's going to do it, and we'll just get ready to move on over to the next segment. That was healthy living. We were listening to there. This is healing through plant medicine. That's our general overall concept tonight. We went through 
fruits and vegetables through the foods. I know this is plant medicine, and we will take a different direction on some of our podcasts mm-hmm. with the plant medicine, because that's another buzzword that can be really dug into. Mm-hmm. And tonight, we're talking about foods. So right. that well, was a they're good They're plants, segment. right? They are plants, that's right. But we're going to talk about some foods, uh, some plants that aren't necessarily food. Yeah, in there's there's whole, whole... And we did talk about some of those, or didn't we? Some of the... And we actually, we didn't talk about things like aloe or natural, right. natural healing things. We can't say the word healing, so on you, FDA. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean. Right. Uh, so this is our website. This is our podcast. And we appreciate you joining us here on Healthy Living with Andy and Brian. And Lexi. Hi. Thanks. Hi. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> See ya. See you guys.